So today I want to share on the subject of uh, heart of joy. The heart is so important in the sight of God. Bible says that out of the abundance of heart, mouth speaks, and out of the heart, there are so many good things also happen. There are so many evil things also happen. When our heart is restless, when our heart is angry and anxious, our actions also will be the same way. But when our heart is at rest and peace and joy, then our actions also will follow it. I've seen many times in my life when there are a lot of uh, pressure in work or anything that I go through or somebody has done something against, when, when I'm not in the presence of God, all the evil things start coming. Probably I should give them back. But in all the situations when I go into God's presence and I receive His peace, when I, when I spend one hour time in the presence of God, I'm absolutely a different person after the prayer. That is why God wants our heart to be under His control. That's why in Proverbs 23, 26, God says, My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Right? God wants our heart to be given to him. Give me your heart and then you, you let your eyes observe my ways. Because once you give your heart, then our heart is under the surrender and the control of God. Then we will want to follow what God wanted us to follow. There are, there are so many needs that might be there in our life. One thing that we should never shake in our life is our heart. The prime reason that the children of Israel did not see the promise was because their heart was not right. Their heart was not able to believe God that He is able and capable of bringing them out of all the situations that they were going through. When the ten spies brought a bad news to the congregation of Israel that we will not be able to possess this land because the people there are mighty. and and because they were not able to believe God, they were not able to trust God because they were not able to remember what God has done for them in the might, mighty hand of Pharaoh and how he delivered them. They were not able to remember and trust God. They quickly gave up saying that, no, this is not possible. God will not be able to do it and we will not be able to receive the promised land. But there was one person called Caleb. If you read Numbers 14.24, God gives a testimony about Caleb in Numbers 14.24. He also saw the giants. He also saw the difficulty. He also saw that the people there, they were are very mighty. But still, Caleb had a different spirit. He had a different spirit in his heart. He said, even though they might be so strong, even though they might be so mighty, but God is mightier than they. And he will still fulfill the promise that he has given us. Man, today you might be going through so many things in life that you are waiting, you are expecting God to do something. Never, never, never allow your heart to depart from the promise the good things that God has planned for your life by unbelieving, by allowing your heart to be distracted, by allowing your heart to be anxious. Trust like Caleb. He also saw the giants. He also saw the big mighty people against him. But still he trusted God. Let us have a heart like Caleb. Anytime a, a troubling situation comes that you are shaken, immediately seek God's presence. God's presence is your answer. The peace, you, in God's presence you receive the assurance and joy. Amen. This is not my message. Like today, as we were worshiping, as uh, as the spirit of God is moving, I thought I should tell about trusting in God. Let our heart be very loyal and 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 hold on to Him. It should be like an anchor, right? It should just stick to Jesus, and it should never depart from it. And that is the situation will make you prosperous. Will make you to be an overcomer. So today, I want to talk about the message, heart of joy. I just want to start with the picture. Can you can you show the first one? If Adam and Eve had been Chinese, they would have the man would have not fallen. Because the Chinese would have eaten the snake. Amen. So we see that the the joy as a as an inherent blessing is lost even in the Garden of Eden, when, when the sorrow came, when the, when the deception came, the sorrow came. But as far as their heart would have been loyal to God, they were continued in the joy uh, forever. Jesus summarized that in John 10.10, 10, right? The thief comes to, uh, does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and that they may have it abundantly. The serpent came to steal everything that they had, the joyful life, the peace that they had. The enemy came to steal, kill and destroy their life. But Jesus came to give us life, life in abundance, which also includes joy, peace, righteousness, and faithfulness, and every good thing that Jesus came to give us. Ten black people were praying. 
10 black people are praying. As they are praying, God appeared to them. So the first person asked God, Lord, I want to be so handsome, so fair skinned like the white people. And, and God said, your wish is granted. Seeing that his prayer was answered, the remaining all people started asking the same prayer. And, and then they were also getting turned and they were also becoming white and handsome. When this was happening, was the tenth person was laughing loud. So God was thinking like, why, why he is laughing? And even the other nine people also were thinking and asked, why he is laughing? After the ninth person was turned, God came to the tenth person and asked him, what do you want and why you are laughing? The tenth person said, I don't want to become white. I want all these nine people to become black again. So it is a, it is a, an aspect of like whether I get or not, others should not get it. Joy is something that belongs to the spirit. We we are a, a, a three part being, a body and a, and, and a soul and a spirit. That is why the, the word joy in the Bible always refers to the spirit, the spirit of joy, right? Even the righteousness, joy in the Holy Spirit. It's all related to heart or related to the spirit. It is in, in, inbuilt, inside. After the fall of Adam and Eve, the heart of a mankind inherently wants to be joyful. Hallelujah. They, they, they inherited sorrow. So every, every human being wanted to receive joy and be joyful. See, God has created our heart like that. And it is nothing wrong to be to aspect to be joyful. Amen. But only when the humanity seeks on the wrong places for joy and, and indulge in things which is wrong, that's where the problem starts. Because it will not be a permanent joy, it will be a temporary happiness. It will not be joy, it will be a temporary happiness which will fade away after some time. The Christian life is the life that is going to have an ultimate joy and pleasure. If there is any true path that is going to give humanity the ultimate pleasure and joy is believing in Christ, it is Christianity. God purpose that the humanity that lost the joy from the in the in the in the Garden of Eden, God determined that He is going to provide the ultimate pleasure and joy to the people who follow Him. That's why the Bible keeps talking about a place called heaven. That's why the Bible keeps talking about a place called heaven. We are not going to grind mill or break stones there. It is the most pleasurable place. It is the most joyful place. If you want to see breathtaking view of different uh, uh, views which will which will make our heart to be joyful. Like today we see a scenery and our heart is feast, the happiness and joy. And heaven as a place is filled with such sceneries and views. That's why like many people who had a vision of heaven or they had a near death experience and they saw heaven, they don't want to come back. This is this is not a place I want to come back. That, that place is so good. Amen. That's why the people who die in Christ, we don't need to worry about them. They are in a perfect best place. That's why the Bible keeps talking about eternal life. The life that is going to be with God and Jesus came to give us eternal life. Eternal life, what is eternal life is all about? It's about a place where there will not be any sorrow, a place where there is no hardship, there is no crime, a place that is so blissful, so joyful, so pleasurable. That's why Jesus said in John 14, 2 and 3. John 14, 2 and 3. Jesus said that I'm going to prepare a place. It's a literally a place where God's people are going to dwell and live with God forever and ever. Today we, we might go for a vacation to a place, a beautiful place, we spend five days, whatever, and then we see that place and we come back, right? And we always keep that in memory. Oh, that place was so good, we had a good time, right? That that try to we try to get joy and peace from, from a memory that is there. Many many times the, the children whom when we take, they, they say that it's better to stay here, or let's not go back. But God has prepared a place which is far, far, far greater and, and joyful and we are not just going to visit and come back. We are going to be there permanently with God and we are going to have joy and peace permanently with Him. In 1 Corinthians 2, 9 it says, I has not seen, nor ever heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. God is not interested in our peace and joy. Why He has to have a place prepared for His children which is so marvelous, which is so good. Amen. So if we need to come to an understanding and a conclusion that God is a God who wants to give us the ultimate pleasure and joy. See, life in eternity is immeasurable. It is beyond the number of years. For that itself, God has prepared something much, much greater. Amen. And for that that period of years, I don't know, it is, it is without end. That is why it is called eternal. For that itself, God has prepared something so marvelous. For what purpose? For us to have ultimate pleasure and joy. If God is, is going to take care of the bigger part of our eternity, 
it will not not take care of the time that we are living on this earth, which is a short time. Amen. That's why in Romans 8.32, Paul is writing like this. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? John 3.16 says, God, Jesus has come that we might have eternal life. I'm just trying to relate to John 3.16 and Romans 8.32. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So Jesus is given into this world so that we might have everlasting life. That is the biggest part of our life for our entire being. God, is, God has given Jesus to take care of the bigger part of our life. If God has done that, will he not take care of the temporary things that we need in this life? That is what Romans 8 32 says. So, Understand that the life that we are living here on this earth, even for this life, God wanted us to have joy and peace through Christ Jesus. Even the difficulties that we face in this world, God wanted us to face it with boldness and joy. Right? That's why Jesus said, in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Right? Let's put John 16.33. John 16.33. Right? In this world you will have tribulation. Right? Tough times will be there. But be of good cheer, be joyful. Be joyful, be of good cheer. Through that, you will overcome the world. See, God is giving a practical solution. He's not saying that you will not have any problem in this world. You will not have any trouble in this world. You will not have any tribulation in this world. But God is giving us a key that through joy, being joyful, you will be able to overcome all the things that you go through. That's why one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit is joy. Galatians 5.22 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Long suffering, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. So, when we are having the fruit of the Spirit, that's why I was saying, right? When when I am not conscious of God's presence, I feel anger. I I, I feel want to uh, give back. But then, when you come in the in the in the presence of God and the Spirit of God, God gives you peace. God gives you joy, and then you are able to overcome that situation. See, this is so important. The 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 reason that we are not being joyful and peaceful is because we are ignoring the ways that God has given us to have joy. If God has given a, a particular method and a way through which you will be able to receive joy when you are going through a tough time, we are ignoring that and we are trying to be joyful, we will never be joyful. These days God is continuously speaking to us about not being worried and but to be overcome through being joyful. That itself tells that God is interested in you having peace and joy. Because he is so concerned about the, the status of his people when, when they go through certain trouble times, when they are not able to use the, the, the key through which we can receive joy, and people ignore that, that's when people end up being so sorrow and, and not being joyful. Today, the God's people are not joyful because we are looking into the world's standard of joy and, and peace and happiness. The world's happiness is always based on what is the situation or what, how people are treating us or it's all based on the others. That others should give joy to me, others should recognize me, others should appreciate me, then I will be joyful. Right? But God is saying that the spirit of joy will not come like that. You go into God's presence, that's how you will receive joy. Because the others who are praising you one day, the other day will flash you other day. So you don't get joy from that. That is a very temporary peace and that is very temporary happiness. You will not get a permanent joy because of that. If my joy is always based on what others are telling good about me, what others are recognizing about me, what others are praising about me, I am set up for a terrible failure. I am not saying that that should not happen. That can happen, that might not happen. But if you are going to lose joy because of that, then you will not be joyful the most of the part of your life. Man, the, in the world standard, how the joy is defined today in this modern world, how the joy is defined. If I get a Facebook like of my post, more people like my post, I am so joyful, yeah, I did something good. It is based on others, they should recognize me, they should appreciate me, right? And, and based on that, I am joyful. If I am if I'm putting a post and nobody likes, you are sad, you are sad about it. So, the joy is based on others, not based on your contentment and your relationship with God. Today, the world standard, because of the sudden world standard, people go through so much pressure in life. Your basement got a promotion in, 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 the, in the workplace and he's going up in the corporate ladder and you're still saying your people are under pressure. Right? I, mean, I also need to get something. Your friend got a job and you did not get a job yet, your people are under pressure. If somebody got a smartphone, the latest smartphone and they're boasting about it, people are under pressure. That's the, word, that's the, that's the way the world is operating today, right? The, we are thinking about joy as somebody is showing off their phone, then I'm under pressure. 
and I, if I get that kind of amount, then I am fine. Right? So, the, the way that world is running and we are taking clue from it and we think that that is joy, that is wrong. That kind of a competing with others and through that somehow taking joy through that will never be sustainable. It will fail terribly many many times in life. One of my relative, my very close relative, he was not disciplined at the young age and he started pestering his parents. They had limited saving after their retirement, right? He started pestering them with the latest iPhone, I want to buy this car. They almost lost their entire property now because of this person's pestering and they don't have money now, right? So when the people are driven by competition, that I'm going to get joy only if I'm getting this. Uh, once that is over, next competition will start immediately. It will not start, stop, right? Because we are always thinking that joy and peace comes from something that I can get based on what others are getting and I need to always run this rat race. People are set for terrible failure. I'm not against getting things for yourself to enjoy, right? But let our joy not be based on what others are doing and I should also have. It should be based on your relationship with God. And that's why God is very particular when he said, rejoice in me, rejoice in the Lord, rejoice in the Lord, be joyful in the Lord. Bible clearly knows that you are set up for failure if you are trying to draw joy based on the world standard. You should avoid it and you should always rejoice in me and I will bless you with whatever that is needed for your life and be joyful in it even in that. So let your relationship be built with God and enjoy that life and that is the way you will have permanent joy. And he will also bless you with good things and through that enjoy life. Right? It is not that God is not against any good things in your life. God wants to give good things. But then let our joy be with God, with what He is giving, not based on the world standard. I want you to uh, concentrate on three, four verses, how the Bible is very clear about the joy is with God alone. Right? And and Bible is keep on emphasizing on that part that you can receive joy in God alone. Let's read Psalm 32 11. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Amen. And, and let's read Deuteronomy 12. 12. So yeah, you shall rejoice before the Lord your God. Right? There was a, the, the way that God was telling his people is that once I bless you with everything that is needed for your life, you come into my presence and rejoice. And rejoice. So you will receive joy before in my presence, before me. Philippians 3.1 Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. If you are going to be joyful in the Lord, it is going to be safe for you. Otherwise, if you are trying to look for the world standard, your credit card bill will go up. That is not safe. Right? If you are going to look into the uh, world standard, you will lose all your wealth. Like the way one of my relatives is doing now. Right? They lost almost all their wealth. But now the joy stopped. Now they, they cannot do anything more. That is safe. Right? God is saying, if you are going to be satisfied and rejoice in the things that I am going to give and you are going to be rejoicing in me, that is going to be greatly safe for you. You will not go into debt, you will not go into all the mental headache and all the problems in life, you will be safe. For unbelievers, the joy is external, based on what is happening to them, what they are receiving, it's all external for unbelievers. But when that stops, what happens? They go into depression, suicide. See, many, many actors, they have millions of followers. When they put one post in Instagram or something, one million likes, two million likes will happen. After some time, their market will go. Right? They are not going to live forever, right? And then what happens? Then slowly the followers will stop decreasing. And then what happens? Now the world is not recognizing me. Because their joy is external. It is based on what others are saying or are thinking about me. Amen. And then they go into different... Many, many, during the time of Corona, many people died in suicide. Many big actors, they died in suicide. How that happens? Because it is external. When something stops, they are no more able to take that into their heart. But then for God's people, our joy is not external. We are joyful inside. We know that God has saved us. We have eternal life. We have salvation. Even if nothing, nobody says anything about us, we are still joyful because God loves us. Right? We have things which are deeper and inside. It will be long lasting. Not just now, even in eternity. We have we have plans even for beyond this earth. Nobody has plans beyond this earth. Unbelievers don't have plans beyond, beyond this earth. They don't even know what is going to happen. Right? But for God's people, we have joy and assurance inside and we have greater things we have already received. So we are not looking for this temporary things that people should recognize me and my joy, joy is based on that. So understand that God has done something marvelous for us, for our lives. And let our joy be based on what God has done for us, not based on what the world is offering us. The reason that we can be joyful is 
for us life's bigger questions are answered we may not know about few things that is happening in this life but for us life's bigger questions why we are here on this earth for what purpose we came where we are going all those things are answered for god's people for others no they don't even know why we are here how did we come into this earth they don't have any clue about it where they are going they have no clue so they try to find some let me have joy in the temporary life they try to make it some and when that also stops they they lose hope completely and then they they end their life for us bigger questions about life is already answered so let your heart rejoice god has release that answer in your life for you to receive what is hope what is what is life is all about everything has been clear for you so we should be more joyful man i know where i'm going i know why i'm here i know what god wanted me to do in this life everything is known to us so when we know that we should have great assurance and peace and joy in our life the sad thing what is happening even god's people are trying to follow the unbelievers ways we try to see that that is joy that is joy that's a very sad state of the children of god they are supposed to learn from us why are you even if nothing is there how you are able to be joyful how you are having hope that even though you might not have a job or you are not having these things how you are having hope and joy in they should ask us amen because for us bigger things are already answered so let us be example for the dying world this world is perishing without christ this world is perishing let us be the beacon of hope and light for them by giving them the joy that god has given us so god is interested in us being joyful and god is saying that i have done everything i have given my son i have given my spirit the spirit of god brings you joy and peace and hope and i have given you everything that is needed for the right way of you being joyful and hopeful all the time right and god has provided that way let's not forget that and let's not run after the world and look for that joy because that joy is not going to be permanent it will be very temporary it will be it will be like a smoke it will just go and then you will go for another 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 it will never end that that kind of joy will never end and we will end up being disappointed and frustrated so god is telling today let your heart be joyful let your heart be joyful be of good cheer bible says that the 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 cheerful heart is like a medicine if you are if you are going through certain things in your body let your heart be joyful it will bring health and healing for your for your body man this was the those romans 15 13 romans 15 13 now may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the holy spirit amen so god is clearly telling it is i who give you joy and peace it is god who has to give that's why the bible says rejoice in the lord it is will god will receive all the hope and peace amen so you need hope you need assurance for life even for the 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 questions that you have not answered yet in your life you have the bigger questions answered you know who we are god has saved us we are going eternally with god for us the bigger things are already answered but there might be few things that is not answered yet probably looking for a job or something in your life or marriage or something you're not that question might not be answered but if you go to god god will give you hope it is i who bless you it is i who give that to you right what are you looking for even for the temporary things god is the one who will give you the hope so go to god for everything right rejoice in the lord let god be your joy giver not the world not your relatives not your friends not your facebook not your instagram amen let god be your joy giver let always run to him and receive joy full and through that god will bless many many people in this world who are hurting themselves they might be externally thinking they are joyful don't believe everything in the facebook only when something good they put all the fights they don't put right only good they put so don't believe in, and get deceived by the social media be believing that's why the bible says in believing you have to believe that god is the one who is going to give you the hope and joy and go to him let him be your joy giver god is interested in his people last few weeks we see the way the subject is coming is do not worry be joyful rejoice in the lord right god is interested about each and every one of you god knows your heart and probably that's the reason this kind of message is coming god wanted you to be joyful with full of hope full of joy full of peace and god is saying that i will take care of you i will never leave you nor forsake you and i will be with you forever right let's go to the name of prayer